Thanks, Chauncey. It sounds like Scanner is pretty compelling in visuals and storytelling and is definitely worth a watch. Up next, we have a review of an album definitely worth a listen, compelling orally and lyrically. Here's Brandon Krakowski with his review. Brandon? Ever since the early part of this decade, Kendrick Lamar has slowly but surely become one of the most important and unique voices in hip-hop. This was, of course, achieved through a couple of incredibly solid releases, 2011's Section 80 and 2012's Good Kid, Mad City, the latter of which is considered by many as one of the finest hip-hop releases of the past few years. However, Lamar has managed to top himself with his latest release, To Pimp a Butterfly, an assured, dense, incredible record that may just be the best hip-hop record of the decade so far. One of the more immediately amazing aspects of the album is the production. The beats presented on the album are deeply rooted in jazz, funk, and soul music. And with such amazing producers as Flying Lotus and Pharrell Williams behind it, the album, to be brief, grooves. King Kunto rides on a strong foot-stomping instrumental, Wesley's Theory's warped bass, courtesy of the always amazing Thundercat, creates a sonically thrilling atmosphere and the reworked version of the lead single, I, feels like it was recorded live at the most happening concert ever witnessed. The tracks bleed into one another flawlessly, feel feeling like one piece of art, as opposed to just a collection of tracks. Much of this helps the album flow completely smoothly. Now, the album may be 80 minutes long, but listening to it does not feel like the least bit of a chore. Of course, you could have the best beats in the world, but without dynamic and interesting rapping, it's all for nothing. Fortunately, Kendrick pulls in some of the best performances of his entire career. The interlude for free gives the feeling of a man manically scatting for his life. The Blacker the Berry is the angriest performance we've ever seen from him, cutting deep to the core of the confusion and anger Kendrick feels about race relations in America. However, the highlight of Kendrick's rapping on this LP is you which can be read as the self-deprecating companion piece to I. In this song's second verse, Kendrick uses a wavering, near-voice-cracking tone to portray a character of a man confronting the person who led him to drink as heavily as he had been. The overwhelming emotional content of the verse, combined with the wavering vocals and bottle sound effects, makes for one of the best verses of the 21st century, bar none. On top of his delivery, Kendrick's lyrics are on a higher level than any other rapper out there. Rhapsodizing about consumerist culture, relationships, and what it means to be an African-American man in these tense, so socially divisive times. Now, perfect scores are rare for me to give out. I believe that they should be saved for truly exceptional pieces of art. But the amazing production, the superb lyricism, and the stellar performance that Kendrick Lamar guarantees that this album will have a spot in history. I give Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly five stars out of five. This is the type of album that is used to define eras in music as benchmarks, in the vein of Sgt. Pepper or Purple Rain or Kid A. This album is essential listening for anyone who loves music. That's it for my review of To Pimp a Butterfly. I'm Brandon Kretkowski.